Hi, so good evening everyone. Welcome to this evening's Introduction to Bookkeeping revision session. So this evening we're going to be starting to look at task one and under task one we're going to be looking at understanding how to set up the bookkeeping systems. Now because these sessions are recorded if you wouldn't mind making sure that you keep your microphone on mute and in order to participate during the session if you could use a chat box. Okay, so I'm just going to go to the task now. So as I said, task one, it deals with understanding how to set up bookkeeping systems. So this includes things like the purpose of business documents, the process of recording bookkeeping transactions and creating and using coding systems. So this task, the first task that you'll see within the assessment is worth 10 marks. So you want to be spending around nine minutes on this task. Now you need to make sure that you're familiar with all the different types of business documents. So these are things like the invoices, sales invoices, purchase invoices. Remember these are requests for payment. We've got credit notes, so when we return goods to, um, to our suppliers or any customers return goods to us, they'll be issued with a credit note. We need petty cash vouchers, remittance advice notes, statements of accounts and of course bank statements. Within this task as well, you might be tested on the different books of prime entry. So make sure you are familiar with all the different books of prime, prime entry and make sure that you know the kind of documents that will be listed within them. So for example, sales invoices, they will be listed in the sales day book. Sales credit notes, they will be entered into the sales returns day book. So you need to be aware of the role of the three different types of ledgers. So firstly, we have the general ledger. Remember the general ledger you may hear being referred to as either the nominal or the main ledger, but don't let it throw you, it means exactly the same thing. Now the general ledger contains all the different T accounts, all the different ledger accounts for all, all the different types of accounts. So there'll be lots of different T accounts for um, different expense accounts, different asset accounts, different liabilities and different income accounts as well. And then you need to be aware of the subsidiary ledgers. So here we have the receivables ledger and that contains a list of all our individual credit customers. And then the payables ledger contains a list of all the individual suppliers accounts. And just remember, it is always the totals that get entered into the general ledger. Whereas if you wanted to see a breakdown of what was owed, for example, by each of our credit customers, we'd need to then look in the receivables ledger. So the ultimate aim of the accounting system of a business is financial statements at the end of the financial year. Now remember, a trial balance is something that is produced at the end of the accounting period. So once we've done all the transactions within our nominal ledger, the end of that financial um, period will then produce an initial trial balance. And that trial balance is basically a check on whether all of our transactions have been entered correctly into the bookkeeping system. And then we've got the statement of financial position. So the statement of financial position, remember it includes all the assets and liabilities of a business. So it shows what the business owns and what the business owes. So the statement of financial position can be thought of as a snapshot of the business at a particular point in time. And then the statement of profit or loss shows the performance of the business or how well the business has performed over that period. Now, 
The statement of profit and loss shows all the income that the business has generated and all of the expenses that it has incurred over the period. So therefore, it's going to determine whether the business has made a profit or whether it made a loss in the accounting period. Now, of course, digital bookkeeping systems have been able to help businesses to automate a lot of their processes that previously bookkeepers had to do manually. One of the ben benefits of the digital systems is that they save a lot of time. So instead of manually entering hundreds of transactions, they can import these transactions in a matter of minutes. So you may be tested on the benefits and drawbacks of digital bookkeeping systems. So it's worth making sure that you do remember to go over these in your revision. So data can be imported from bank records. So it links your bookkeeping system to your online banking. Can also be imported from any spreadsheets or Excel files, and also from any third party software as well. Now, you may also be asked to create account codes for either customers or suppliers. So within this, just make sure you carefully read the instructions. So we're going to have a little look at a task now. OK, so it says all of Equation Limited's customers have a customer account code. The codes are made up of the first three letters of the customer's name, followed by the number of the ledger page allocated to each customer in that alphabetical group. So just make sure that, remember this type of question, make sure you read the instructions thoroughly. So the codes are made up of the first three letters of the customer's name, followed by the number of the ledger page allocated to each customer within that alphabetical group. Equation Limited now has three new customers, Hurried Limited, Prompt Limited, and Suddenly Limited. Part A, insert the relevant account code in the coding list below for each of the three new customers. So you can see here that we've got a list of all the different customer names, and then we've got some customer account codes. And like for example, for the first one, for Brook Limited, we can see that the customer account code is firstly ABR, so it contains the first three letters of their name. And then it's 01 for the um, ledger page because it's the only customer name within the, the A group. So if we have a look, we can see that we've got Hurried Limited and we need to put the customer account code for them. So what do you think the customer account code will be? Excellent. Yeah, good Latika and Chelsea. Yeah, well done. So the first three letters, H-U-R. So there's no other um, customer names beginning with an H. So yeah, it will be zero, 01. Good. And then next we've got Prompt Limited. So what would we have for that? Brilliant. Yeah, well done. So, whoops. Put an R instead of a P. So P, R, O, and of course this time, because we've already got two customer names within the, within the P alphabetical group, we're therefore going to number this one zero, 03. Brilliant. And then last one, what will we have for suddenly limited? Brilliant. Well done. Okay, so Equation have now started to sell more than one product and they must now adapt their coding system to incorporate the product type. This will make the accounting system more robust and flexible for any future developments. You are on a project team and are establishing the new al alphanumeric coding. The new codes will be made up of, again, the first three letters of the customer's name, followed by the number of the ledger page 
allocated to each customer within the alphabetical group. So, so far, it's the same as part A. But then it said followed by the product type two digit code as follows. And you can see that we've got, whoops, sorry, if it's screw, it's SC for bolt, BO for hinges and handle, for hinges HI and handles HA. So we've just got an extra addition. So like you can see here now for the first one for Abrupt Limited, we can see that it still consists of the first three letters of the name. And then we've got the, um, the, the numbering. And then we're told that it buys handles. And of course, for handles, we're told to use HA. OK, so for Hurried Limited, what, what would we have? Brilliant. Yeah, you've got it. Yeah, so H, U, R, and then it's zero one, one, same as before, but this time, because it says by bolts, for bolts, we're told it's B, O. Good. OK, and then the next one, Prompt Limited. Brilliant. Yes. So first three letters of the name followed by the number within the alphabetical groups. There's already two customer names starting with P. So therefore this, this one is three. And then for screws, it's SC. Brilliant. Brilliant. And then the last one, you can see Sylvia, Demi, yes. Good. Well done. Good. And then this time it's handled, so HA, brilliant. Okay, so moving on to the next part of the task. So part C, it says link the definitions in the boxes on the left with a statement in which they would appear in the financial statements. So first of all, we've got amounts owed by customers. So what would that, what would we match that with? So the first one we've got, say, so I'll number it just to make it a little bit easier for you guys. Yes, good, Sylvia, my Janet. Good, Robert. Yes, good. Yes, yeah, so amounts owed by customers would be the trade receivables in the statement of financial position. Excellent. Good. Okay, so next we've got income from the sale of screws, bolts, hinges and handles. Brilliant. Yeah, well done. Number one. So for number one, it says sales in a statement of profit and loss. And remember, profit and loss includes all income and expenditure accounts. Statement of financial position includes all asset and liability accounts. So therefore, the last one, so physical cash received and banked. Yeah, so it would be bank under the current asset in the statement of financial position. And just remember, just remember the difference between, between current assets and non-current assets. So bank is a current asset, short-term asset. Whereas not a non-current asset would be something that the business owns for longer than 12 months. Yeah, good, Sylvia. So a current asset is something owned for less than one year. Non-current asset, something the business owns for longer than one year, such as vehicles, property, maybe office equipment. Good. Okay, in the last part of this task, part D, it says to identify the book of prime entry being described in the statement below. A day book detailing the items returned to suppliers. So which day? The so items returned to suppliers. Almost, Robert. Mm -hmm. Good, Robert. Yeah, good, Demi. Yeah. Oh, ju just be careful with that, De Demi. Remember, it's suppliers. So we're returning goods to suppliers. Yeah, 
Yeah. So it's the Purchase Returns Day book. Good. Yeah, so just watch out for the wording there. Okay, and then that's that's the end of start uh, of task two and starting of so sorry this the end of task one the starting of task two. So next session we will be going on and looking at the next task. So thank you very much for participating in this evening's session. You will all receive a recording of the session within about 24 hours. And if you have any questions about the revision sessions, please contact us at aatrevision at fi.co.uk. Okay, so thank you ever so much. And hopefully I'll see you all again next week. Have a lovely evening.